Hey everyone, welcome to Sarah's Cross-Dressing Stories. Today, I'm going to share with you Psychiatrist Wife, Feminized Husband Part 2. If you're new to the channel then please subscribe now for more captivating stories and be sure to hit that notification bell to never miss an adventure. I had no idea that I was getting so much help. I'll get to that in a minute. I really didn't have all that much faith in spiking his food though. On a whim, call it a hunch because I didn't think the rather small quantity of chemicals I was feeding him could have this effect, I sent a sample of both the unfiltered and filtered water off to an independent lab at the nearest big city of 150,000 people where we went for recreation and serious shopping. It was a revelation. Every drop of water we drank and every drop that fed our garden was generously spiked with various female and phytohormones. No wonder the garden did so well. So that was why Ken had begun to mellow a bit. Bees can't do everything. Of course I knew that the addition of these hormones to my diet would do nothing but preserve my youth and beauty and help prevent bone loss and osteoporosis, but Ken. Well, would they prevail on his youth and beauty too? It appeared so if Marty was any gauge. He was becoming prettier all the time. It was rather obvious that the plant's discharge was affecting the stream. Even the fish we caught were supplying us with estrogenic compounds. With this new knowledge, I made it my business to get to know first the wives and then the husbands and children of several of the other families that lived close by on the stream, paying special attention to what their males looked like when I met them. A couple of them had lived there for several years and appeared quite round and sweetly dispositioned. How interesting, I thought. Long-term effects? After thinking on it, I realized that the wells too were fed by the aquifer fed by the stream and would naturally contain the same compounds, perhaps in lesser amounts since they were filtered through the ground. I began to observe Ken as unobtrusively as possible yet took stock of his appearance and attitudes with increased interest. I certainly did want to train him, but did I want to turn my Adonis into a goddess, a kindred spirit, willing and able to converse on my level? Gee, that sounded like a terribly quirky kind of fun. Oh, I was just so devilish sometimes. I challenged myself. Was it possible? Could I really do it, and what would be the finished product? Could I perhaps turn my Adonis into an Aphrodite-like in some of those stories? That was terribly quirky of me to think of, but also it got me a little hot and bothered, and I just loved a challenge. I rationalized that, since he lived here, drank the water, and worked at that plant that eventually, this would happen anyway. All I could do would be accelerate his processing. I got him to let me take a picture of him in his swim trunks for comparison later. With my observations and close inspection of the picture came the realization that he had indeed begun to soften, not only in mind due to my carefully worded suggestions, but in body. His muscles no longer rippled and he no longer had a six-pack for a stomach. He was becoming smooth, like a girl. I couldn't help notice either that he seemed to have an increased appreciation for my expressions of femininity like my sexy lingerie and nighties and high heels. When we went out, even just to the local movies, I dressed up, not down, and he seemed appreciative of my efforts. He became more expressive generally and told me he liked seeing me in dresses, even beginning to express some opinions, something he had never done when we were courting. He began commenting on my clothes and shoes. Now, when Marty came over for dinner or hung around most of the weekend, he was getting the same treatment I was giving Kenny, having his boy hormones blocked and girl ones boosted by what I fed them. We began to become more involved in girl talk and Ken began to listen and learn even if it was unconsciously at first. 
and Marty was beginning to blossom all over the place. He was getting downright cute, from a guy's point of view. Poor kid. Funny thing was, he seemed okay with it, and that made me really wonder about his dad. I just had to meet him sometime. As Ken became a bit softer, he became a better lover. This gave me the idea that if some is good, more is better, and I began adding another quarter teaspoon of my compound in all of his meals. It didn't take long before that move showed real promise as I soon noticed more pronounced changes and he actually began to shift a little toward goddess-like in those stories after only about six weeks on the increased dosage. He was getting a little bouncy like Marty, not only in his chest, but in his demeanor. His areoli were expanding. We were in the big city, and I was having my hair and nails done. Ken had taken that time to go get a part for our rototiller, but after about an hour, there he was sitting in a chair at the salon waiting for me idly looking through the available reading material. I suppose I don't need to explain what that was. Certainly not, Hot Rod. He had his nose buried in Cosmopolitan. On the occasions when I was pointed in his direction, he seemed to actually be engrossed. How interesting! I made a note to ask him casually later what he had been reading. I filed this away at once and my little head started scheming. Before we left, I had suggested, and he had accepted with, what to me was amazing ease, the idea of getting his other ear pierced and his nails done. His hair wasn't long really, not yet anyway, just a little over his ears and down to his collar, but it was thick and full. With the additives he was getting, he'd surely not go bald. I didn't want to push my luck, so I just suggested tiny little gold studs. As we had walked around the mall shopping, I had noticed quite a few fellas with two hoops, some of them a fair size or heavy, and even a couple He-Man types with dangles, and mentioned how I thought that look was neat and would look nice on him. Then I let it drop. He took the bait. Or, the new chemical balance in his body did. Either way, my baby was on the road to becoming more handsome than he or we had ever dreamed. He commented on how he did think the hoops looked nice on a guy we saw with similar hair to his. Marie did a nice job on his nails, not too feminine, but I did manage to tell her not to cut them. He did get a little teasing at work at first about the earrings, but it died down. After all, he had been such a macho track star and all and was well respected. When he told me the teasing had ceased, I got him a nice pair of small one-half genuine gold hoops to wear. He accepted them readily and just left them in all the time. From this small beginning, things just seemed to take on a natural progression. Well, perhaps not so natural, but you get the idea. Slowly but surely, Ken began to blossom. His once rock-hard body took on increasingly gentler contours. He was still strong, but I could see the subtle shift. He was smoother, less chiseled. His once rock-hard pectorals, which protruded from his chest anyway, now protruded further and with much larger brown areola. Then, his ego took a little shift too. He began to take better care of his skin and hair, and he let his hair grow. He picked up a few rather feminine mannerisms about his hair too, and I noticed my skin lotion and beauty soap disappearing faster. He and Marty were getting along famously now, and nothing Marty could say could keep Kenny out of the conversation. Finally, I asked him what he'd been reading in Cosmo the last time we were at the salon and he said, oh, it was just something about what was going to in with shoes, dresses and hair for next spring I think. I think the spring styles are going to be really pretty. Well no. By the time I was ready for another perm, he needed a haircut. 
I made an appointment for him to get a trim at my salon, which turned out to be a wash and perm instead much to his and my surprise, and Ken found himself with curlers in his hair under a dryer alongside me. The operator was so taken with his mane, she talked him into doing something stylish with it. It was theoretically a unisex salon, but there was rarely a guy in there. It was so cute seeing Ken under the dryer beside me having another manicure and when we were done and he looked in the mirror, it was obvious he liked what he saw. What I saw was beginning to lean a little more toward perhaps a Kelly or a Kathy rather than a Ken. He was definitely getting cuter and the poor dear just couldn't figure out how he was putting on a little weight as his body began to lose that sinewy definition he had always had. He could still put away a lot of food though, but it was depositing nicely for my purposes as his metabolism began to slow to a more leisurely pace and lovely fat began to deposit itself on his thighs, butt, hips and chest. The salon seemed like a good place to work from as a starting point in my efforts to domesticate him and so, even though it was more trouble for me, I quit getting perms and starting going in for a wash and set every couple weeks, making sure to entice him to come on whatever pretext I could think up at the time. He never refused, and soon became comfortable there and got to know the girls and talked with them girlishly, I might add. He read the fashion and other women's magazines and when he was sitting beside me under the dryers, I would glance his way seeing him lingering on various articles and particularly on hair, makeup and nail and hand care. It wasn't long until Marie would finish my manicure and Ken was getting one-two at every session. She just sort of teased him into it. I'd never really noticed before, but he did have rather slender hands and feet for a man and Marie always gave him a couple coats of hardener and a top coat so his nails began to shine a little and of course, she began to round his nails as they grew longer and she never failed to push his cuticles back. When she was doing nails, she flew on autopilot. A hand was a hand and deserved to be pretty I guess. Works for me. I was pretty friendly with Marie and asked her if she had noticed any changes in Ken since I had started bringing him in. The answer, of course, was yes and I noticed a naughty twinkle in her eyes, not unlike my own. I gave her a couple website addresses to look at and without any further discussion except a wink next time we came in, she began doing Ken's manicures just like mine, allowing his nails a little more length and roundness. He'd always look at them just like a man does with an inward fist when she was done, but she corrected him and showed him how to appreciate his manicures properly with an open, backhanded glance. I now had a co-conspirator. How lovely! We exchanged email addresses and talked once in a while about Ken's progress. Yes, she did think he was taking on a more feminine appearance, although it was quite subtle. She had known him in high school too, so she did have a guideline for comparison. She came right out and asked me if I was doing anything to intentionally feminize him and, since I enjoyed having someone else in on the joke, confessed that I was indeed working in that direction because I didn't like my man so macho. I didn't give her all the particulars on the net as that can be hacked into. Marie knew of Ken's ego and thought it would be good medicine for him and expressed her willingness to help in any way she could. Now that we were going into the city more, I began to engage Ken in more window shopping conversations and found out he had learned quite a lot from his reading and was developing some feminine vocabulary, knowledge and definite opinions about styles and fabrics. How neat, I thought. We now had a new common ground for conversation just I had hoped and not just the usual husband-slash-wife stuff. He did have an eye for a pretty shoe too. As we visited the shops, I began explaining about the feel and texture of different fabrics and I could see that he was gaining an appreciation for these soft and feminine things as I would make it a point to have him get the feel of various materials. 
I had decided however to be as subtle as I could stand to be and even though by now had become fascinated with the idea of truly feminizing him like those stories I had read, took to other jewelry as my next step. I got him a bracelet and necklace, nice ones, for his birthday. Not those big chunky masculine ones either and I got him a pair of zircon dangles too. I began to wear the sexiest undies and high heels I could find and wore them when we went out and at home. I always made sure I had my best wiggle going when I knew he was watching. Of course, this made me a little taller than him. Ken began to express his pleasure at my efforts with some very knowledgeable comments like, I think the blue Dorsey pumps would look better with that dress honey. I was secretly hoping he would become a little jealous of my femininity and as summer of our second year on the land approached, I was rewarded for my patience. He now knew the difference between an empire waist and a regular one, an A-line skirt and full one and a lot of other stuff, the proper names for various styles of footwear and lingerie and I had made very special efforts to increase his appreciation for the feel of nylon and satin especially. I had noticed him reading an article one day on how to please your man and it discussed clothing, what and how to wear it and some things one did in the bedroom in nice terms. Well, I just knew I was going to have to read that article too and find out what he would be expecting and before he could even hint, I gave it to him. I began to pleasure him in ways I would like to be pleasured. I also began to seduce him by prancing around in hose and heels and a teddy or chemise, flaunting my femininity in his face like it suggested in the article and found it really turned him on as he ran his hands all over me from head to toe. He snagged my hose once so I made him start using hand lotion all the time in addition to his totally feminine manicures and his hands became soft and feminine. As I became more friendly with my girl neighbors, I decided to ask them to let me see their family albums. Most girls like to share those and so I got to see their men and sons as they grew slash matured slash changed and without exception, they all had a certain femininity about their appearance if not a downright girlishness especially when I actually met them. They would all start out normal from the time they moved there and then they would slowly change. As I got to know a few of them too, it became all too apparent that the boys especially had been influenced by the local water. One of the baby boys was born with breasts, which does happen if the mother's hormones are running amok and how could they not? A couple of the young boys were well, quite pretty, which I'm sure caused them no end of problems and they acted a lot like girls too and simply refused to let their hair be cut. One gal, Veronica, showed me a picture of her eldest child, Lee, who had moved to the city before we moved there and was now twenty. I didn't realize, due to the name and his appearance that this was a boy and remarked how attractive she was and what a nice figure she had in that bikini. Veronica noticeably flushed and told me that was her son and told me that he was now living as the girl he appeared to be. They had been out there for twenty years and had raised their four kids there. Veronica was rather worldly, having lived in a couple really large cities in her youth, and seemed okay with it. I asked her how her husband felt about the situation and instead of giving me a direct answer, showed me a picture of him in his also well-filled bikini showing mucho cleavage about the time he was around thirty. He had a really cute face and figure. Veronica, this is your husband? I mean, I can see he has matured some since and he does seem a little curvy for a guy. I'll bet he'd look darling dolled up. How did this happen? Tell me all about it. It appeared that Veronica hadn't really shared all this with anyone before but of course, her kids had grown up seeing and knowing and Robert, now eleven and getting bumps and who would probably turn out to be Bobby was headed the same direction. She seemed glad for someone to talk to about it all. I really don't know or understand it all that well Peg but my husband and sons are just as feminine in appearance and tastes and manner as my daughters. 
Naturally, when Terry began to take on this flavor to the point it became all too obvious, we went and had his blood examined. We did it with Lee too, and the whole family has the same hormones coursing through our blood, although the boys to a lesser extent. Now that Lee is living as a girl though, she is taking large doses of female hormones and will have surgery when she's 21 and she has a steady boyfriend. She doesn't have a masculine thought in her pretty head. It's been very hard for me to relate to her as a boy for many years now. It was quite upsetting at first, but I got used to Terry's shift and actually enjoyed having him really understand me and then Lee changed too and I just had to accept it. She really is pretty, isn't she? She's lovely Veronica. I don't think you have anything to be ashamed of and Terry is quite cute for a middle-aged man or a woman. Does he still have that figure? To tell you the truth, Peg, I think he looks better in a dress and heels than I do. You mean he dresses as a woman too? For years now, especially since Lee began to look and act more and more like a girl and we finally gave in to letting him follow his heart and dress like one. He just was being himself. Terry always wears ladies' lingerie and 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 Lorraine have completely accepted their daddy Terry with an I instead of a Y. I don't know how that will influence their relationships when they get married but as Terry changed, we had little choice but to embrace the new she in our lives. They only see their daddy dressed as a male when he doesn't have a choice. His bosom is rather hard to hide anyway and they've gotten used to seeing him in nighties. He's a C cup. All of us wear nighties now, even Bobby. We go to the city as five girls all the time. Now that you know, maybe he will relax and let you meet her dot. I'd love to. Actually, this is all quite fascinating because Ken seems to be changing too and you're the first person I've shared this with also. His body used to so hard but now he is becoming quite smooth and round and seems to be developing a bosom and hips. I wonder if he'd like to try wearing something girlish too. I was just dangling a carrot here and preparing her for the future when Ken would, if I had my devious way, become Kelly or Kathy. I had, by now, read a lot more of those stories on the net and had found other websites as well and quite frankly, sometimes I caught myself in a compromising position with my left hand as I read these transformation stories. I got some neat ideas from them too. That's really a tough one, Peg, but if it looks like a girl, it would probably enjoy dressing like one too. You wouldn't disapprove of my Kenny looking or dressing girlishly in front of your kids? I don't have much room for discrimination in this house, Peg. The kids are used to girlish guys, and it will probably only be a couple years before Bobby has to wear a girl's swimsuit too. There isn't much doubt he'll end up a girl. His manhood isn't developing at all. Why don't you test the waters and see if he'd like something girlish to wear, maybe a nighty or panties and a camisole or something. I noticed how pretty his hair and hands are and his earrings. He's a lot cuter than he used to be. He could probably be a cute girl if he wanted to be. You know, Marie, down at the salon where we go, said the very same thing to me the other day I lied. One has to lay a foundation before you build a house after all. That might be fun. I guess if he's going to turn girlish on me, he might as well enjoy some of the perks too like Terry, huh? If he doesn't reject it out of hand at once, you probably have yourself a new girlfriend I'm afraid and if his body is changing, so is his mind. I learned that the hard way. My Terry is terribly female and she seems to know just what I'm thinking and feeling. It's really very nice. I do want him to be happy and he does seem to have a special feeling for femininity lately. Okay. I'll let you know what happens. 
We finished our coffee and I drove home. Another ally. How interesting. It had to be the discharge from the plant, at least at their house. I knew from my schooling that males and females process information differently. I began to wonder if there was a way to make it impossible for his body to utilize his male hormones and so I typed in testosterone blocker into a couple search engines. It didn't take long to find what I needed. I couldn't actually get that at the store but I could order it over the net from overseas, which I did, and that too was incorporated into the mix when it arrived a couple weeks later. That's all for now, see you in the next video. Please share your valuable opinion. It will give me the courage to go further.